Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. The music sounds awfully familiar today. effects. <laughs> well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to episode 200. Bicentennial. The Bicentennial episode. Chris, can you believe you and I have been sitting in these chairs every Wednesday morning just about for 200 episodes? Yeah, it, it, you know, after after episode one, I lost track. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for him to say, I lost interest after that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't feel a day over episode 29. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Funny. Oh man! Well, it's a it, it certainly is a um, it is what's the word I'm looking for? It's apropos. It is uh, it is um, it's a worthy 200th episode to have as our guest Kevin Thorne from our famous Drink and Draw episodes, where we talk about all things. Uh, drawing and sketching and, uh, you know, creating the, doing the creative work of the e-learning instructional design L&D professional. But before we get to that, how's the weather everywhere? Jeez, I almost forgot to ask everybody. How's the weather everywhere? <laughs> Where's, where are you coming from, folks? Drop it into the chat. Whew, I'm a little rusty today. <laughs> we, we, we take the month of August off and all of our, uh, all of our normal processes just completely evaporated on us. My, well, I'm in Arizona, so my brain just melts, and yeah, very, I come back waiting for it to uh, waiting for it to solidify again. Maybe instead of asking about the weather, we should ask how everybody's allergies are. You know, that seems to be that seems to be more of a uh, allergies are good. Days, eh? Well, I'm in the south, so it's still in the 90s and the humidity is usually the humidity is typically higher than the ambient temperature. Where... That's brutal. And it, and that water in the air weights down the pollen and holds yeah, you it can just, to the ground. You can, and... you can breathe your daily water intake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh Scuba my. tanks on the wall for going outside. Yeah, I I, I talked with I went both out to of the you. Uh, Oh, go sorry. ahead, Kevin. No, I was. I, I went out. It was over the weekend. I went out to uh, get the mail. Or well, it was a holiday, so the recycle bin usually goes on Monday. It's holiday, so it doesn't go on Tuesday. So it was yesterday, and uh, I forgot to get the mail the day before. Well, Saturday. Anyway, it was kind of one of those things, and so I said, "Well, I'll go out. And I'll take the thing out." Okay. So I come back in, and I says, and, and my wife said, "You you are going to take another shower." I said, I just took a shower like an hour ago. She goes, yeah, but you just went outside. You walked all the way to the end of the driveway. Clearly, you need another shower. <laughs> I got to thinking, you know, I am a little sticky from walking out there. <laughs> Ew. It is, Chelsea, my Pizza Planet shirt. It is. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, sketching and, and drawing. And kudos to Chelsea for picking up on that. I think the last time we were in the green room in our last episode, I asked you um, about the shirt because my brain was. Processing. Did I wear the same shirt last time? One one of the previous episodes because I know I, yeah. I asked you about it because I was trying to figure out if it was real pizza oh, or something else, yeah. and, and then you, you oh, sort of yeah, anchored yeah. me in on the actual. I only wear it on special occasions. Yeah, we're, and we're special. <laughs> we're special here. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, and there's cool. an Atari behind Chris. Yes, anybody see Elf? Dated, so ah, uh, yes, Elf back there. Oh yeah, 
I need to start watching those reruns. No. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Good times. Good times. Yeah, somebody noticed your Atari behind you there, Chris. I yeah, and I cannot claim ownership of it. Disclaimer: These are all things collected um, largely by our CEO here at Domino, and I've just raided the. We have a display of them out in the main room, but I raided a bunch of them to just make my office look cool. I'm not cool. <laughs> it's a but it's a cool <laughs> looking office. <laughs> Not, not, there, hey, there is nothing better than having uh, archaic historical technology behind you, especially when it's gaming technology. <laughs> well, okay, folks, creative visual languages. And actually, wow, boy, are we rustier than ever. Maybe for those folks who have no idea what a Kevin Thorne is, what a Nugget <laughs> Head is. Oh, right, yeah. You, you guys, you, it, we should probably let Kevin uh, introduce himself. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally missed that, you know. Hey, gang, here's Anonymous. What is that? What is that on the screen? What is that? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> we should have had a uh, warm up episode or something. Uh, <laughs> we ought to make a list. <laughs> a checklist, right? Oh, boy. All right, Tag, you're it. Your turn. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Kevin Thorne. Uh, been around this industry, better part of two decades. Um, uh, and, you know, the whole accidental instructional designer, I'm one of those. You know, I started as, as a. Uh, um, delinquent teenager uh, and then ran away and joined the army did that for a career and then there was no marketable skill to live under a pine tree so I had to get a real job and then I went back and got a degree in IT Um, that led me to corporate America uh, which led me to the training department which led me to all things creative you know e-learning and designing experiences if you will and i've been an artist cartoonist drawer doodler my whole life so i found a way to how can i imp, how can i implement my hobby my interest in, in creative art into um e-learning so kind of cut my teeth at that corporate cubicle farm um started freelancing and uh Freelancing got to be a full-time gig, so one had to go. So I quit the uh, corporate gig. Uh, when was that? Uh, 2012, so 10 years ago. Been doing this ever since. And then got some kind of thirst for knowledge bug about five years, six years ago. Went back to school, got my master's in, IT, in uh, instructional design. And after this, at 12 p.m. today, I am taking my oral comprehensive exam to become a bona fide doctoral candidate if I pass. Hmm. So that's today, later. And then my research research interest is uh, comics in learning, using visual language and comics to tell stories, digital storytelling, and the benefits of retention of information. Hmm. Um, so, the oral the oral comprehension exam is that like in the pill form or is it like a syrup that you that you take? Or what, I wish it was work? that easy. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> no. Uh, in, in all seriousness, um, you know, congrats on that, and you know, we're rooting for you today. For sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Indeed. I'm glad this is here because otherwise, I'd be an anxiety mess. You know, you're always ah, anticipating. Okay. You're nervous about a big exam. Yeah. And I wish the exam was at like six in the morning just to get it over with. <laughs> but because it's in the middle of the day, this is great. Like distractor this morning. Yeah, we'll take, we'll take your mind off it. <laughs> and, and last time Kevin was here, he was showing us how he turned a family vacation into um, basically sort of a comic book kind of approach as a way of like, you know, creating a memento of it, et cetera. And, and yeah. um, Brett's got a poll in the polls there you guys you folks who are joining us might see it because i gave everybody homework that's right <laughs> despite it being summer vacation um brent was mean so anyway it'd be interesting to know uh you know if anyone took advantage of what kevin showed us um and i'm going to vote no i i, I, think I, <laughs> I didn't do the homework i didn't do the homework either well i didn't hey. actually take a vacation so we do have one vote for yes so that's kind of fun Hey, all right. Kudos to the Keeners. Woohoo! Unless that's Kevin putting the yes in there. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> and one of the recurring yeah. themes that we've had through different visits with Kevin um, have been things like the creative, you know, language communicating using visuals, uh, whether that's been, you know, a simple thing as a way of getting started with a storyboard or just even capturing ideas in the, in the, you know, early stages of an instructional design through to, um, you know, we've done some things with characters and diversity and stuff like that today too. So um, when we're dipping back a little bit towards those visual languages and, um, and, uh, returning back in that direction a bit with uh, with today's episode. But we do also want to just make sure, hey, if you've got questions um, as we go along, toss them into the chat um, or the official question panel, whichever whichever way you want to go. And the cool thing about um, having Kevin with us is that uh, even though we're not just talking here. We're, we're Folks, we are not just talking, we're doing. Kevin will actually be drawing during our episode. But, so maybe well, I shouldn't say we. Kevin will be doing. <laughs> Brett and yeah, I are right. just here for the talking. <laughs> oh, I try to follow along. I have my yeah. I have my trusty uh, my trusty whiteboard here. Oh, so there we go. if we good, if good, I need good. to if I need to show any uh, examples of my amazing visual uh, language skills, I'll I'll whip them out for you. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, mostly my visual language <laughs> skills are like those characters that they use instead of letters in the swear words. That's my visual language right there. That, that is a that is a good <laughs> visual language. Yes. Well, if we I'm going to... Gonna... No, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, if we were going to talk about visual languages, I just want to be clear with everybody. Everybody needs a visual language at some point. You've, you've all, whether you're an instructional designer, whether you think you're creative, whether you illustrate uh, regularly or not, or you just dream of being an illustrator like Kevin, you know, you're all, all of us have to get up in front of folks at one point or another, maybe in front of a whiteboard, maybe in a PowerPoint presentation or something, and you need to visually represent your ideas or something that you're trying to do. And visual language is one of those things that everybody can benefit from knowing, even just the basics. So uh, maybe, Kevin, you want to start off in, in that vein? or Yeah, so, I mean, we could go in a thousand different directions. So um, <clears throat> my probably my first encouragement design starts on paper um and you've heard that you've heard that before right i mean the one of my favorite stories is the the the, the 2010 dodge viper i think it was 2010 when that car came out um it was designed on a napkin literally on a paper napkin initially at a, at a cocktail bar um and then they went into production so there are so many stories about how things start on paper um, because an idea hits and you sketch it out and then that <clears throat> that's kind of like your inspiration piece for for those of you that are interior designers you know you go my wife does this and well i do this too we'll go get a we'll go get a pillow throw it on the floor it's like oh there the, the whole room is going to be decorated behind this pillow the decorative pattern so it's about finding that inspiration so being creative it doesn't have anything to do with your artistic skills so let's make that clear it doesn't this is not there's a skill involved, but it's not whether or not you can draw. Let me put it that way. Um, but I encourage you to be observant because inspiration is all around you. It's just thinking about how can I, how can I repurpose this idea into my work? So it could be anything from a custom interface for e-learning. It could be, um, um, a scene, a setting to, to kind of communicate a conceptual story. Or it can be conceptual, where it's um, more of an, an analogy. Uh, you're trying to communicate a sequence. So how you do it, approach it, we don't have enough time to go into all the different disciplines of, of what that would work. But um, I could start with the visual language, the visual alphabet. We've done that before. But I've got some examples to kind of summarize what I was just saying. So mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can turn this thing back on here. I'm using iPad Pro with Procreate. That's my digital tool of choice. Um, but I just got this awesome vintage American steel standing drafting table. I, I saw that, a picture of that in your in your Twitter yeah, feed it's, uh, where yesterday. Is it? Can you see it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Look at that monster. Look at that. That yeah, is a classic. Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh no, my camera's going to fall. Hang on. 
Hang on. I got it. Oh, my gosh. And and just so people understand, even though he does have digital tools of choice, it is like pen and paper because he does use the pencil and he actually does draw in no, everything, the procreate. Everything starts, no, everything starts on paper. So it's always with the hand. Or digital paper, however, whatever the case may be, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I done flubbered it. Hang on, let me start over. Hang on. Yeah. Well, while you're while you're hooking that up, uh, the other piece I just wanted to add that I think is really important for the work that we do is um, when you're out doing instructional design analysis stuff, and you're talking to your SMEs or you're talking to your stakeholders, taking what they give to you when you ask questions when you start to try to you know draw out of them what it is that they want being able to take their ideas and their thoughts and to put it in a visual language form to show back to them and say is this what you're telling me is this what you mean i think is exceptionally critical and important it's one thing to be able to write it all out in words and say this is what i heard but to be able to show them this is what I hear you saying. Uh, I think, um, you know, visually, I think is an incredibly valuable and, Im- and an important skill to, to apply this to mm-hmm. as well. Um, so this is the, the, the fundamental visual alphabet. Everything really kind of starts here. Um, credit to Dave Gray at explain.com for coming up with this, golly, 15 years ago. Or at least he defined it. Let's put it that way. Um, there's a lot of research that goes all the way back about different approaches to visual communication and visual language. Uh, Dave Gray kind of defined it as an alphabet. So if we look at these um, 12, well, there's 12 symbols or glyphs, if you will. Um, on the second row there, Pentagon to cloud, you see the ellipsis. So are you, you are that, you sharing your screen? I thought I was. Am I not? I'm not seeing it. Well, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> wow, you can tell we're new at this, right? <laughs> it, it feels just like our first episode. It's, it's <laughs> a nostalgia <laughs> trip for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me... <clears throat> no, it's all good. Uh, yeah. I know what I got to do. I got to pop this browser out, put it over here. Um, <laughs> it, it, Jamie's noting we can see uh, your monitor in the reflection of your glasses, Kevin. So maybe if you just zoom in with that, with that, there, you go. <laughs> there we go. Now we can all see it. There just, we go. Just Are those glasses touch screen. Is that yeah, what right? they mean by leaning into it? Yeah, right. <laughs> boom, boom. I hope there's I hope there's nothing um, confidential oh, on my monitor. <laughs> um. All right. Well, now we all all know which Darth Vader stuffy you're ordering next for your collection. <laughs> a little late, but I finally found it. Come on, just uh, oh, come on. Why is this knocking, not connecting? Knocking now? the desk off here. I'm having so much fun trying to figure this out. Here we go. Just just tell me what to draw. I'll go here ahead and comes. sketch it up for you. That didn't so help we're, either. We're seeing the camo panel. Maybe a different monitor. Yeah. Or or move some things around or by the way folks we might as well just pitch this too i mean we're talking about procreate but uh kevin's currently using the camo app on his iphone as his webcam which is kind of cool so for those of you who like to geek out on the technology we use that uh it is a another good one i have no idea where my procreate screen is at it's showing that it's up you see it on your screen? Um, it's showing that it's connected, but I can't find the screen where it's connected at. Let's try again. It should come right up here in there. Okay, now let's... Well, you know... Let's see if I remember the visual alphabet. Let's test Brent's skills. See if I get this right, Kevin. Okay, here we go. Uh, A line. Yep. 
is oh that's an at sign <laughs> a spiral that's one right yep that's one uh yep. 10 more to go circle no no dang it how about a dot a dot yes Whew. anybody somebody help me out in the chat come on people let's go <laughs> Well, I'm uh, disappointed. This is not a triangle. Connected. Yes. Why isn't a circle in it then? Dang it. Um, maybe a Tri square. Well, you're right. A circle is in there. I'm just teasing you. Oh, whew. okay. Circles had to be in there. What else do we have? Does this thing have a whiteboard by chance? No, Crowdcast. I don't think it does. I mean, it was working a minute ago. Um, I had it up and running, and now it's not. It's not going to sync on me here. Well, let's just talk about it. Let's talk can, about. Let's just talk about it. I can. I mean, I can flip the. I can turn it around and show you that yeah, way. Yeah. I guess. Let's default let's, to that. What the heck? Let's yeah. do that. There we go. There, I'm sharing my screen. How about there that? There we go. Oh, the arc. I totally forgot the arc. What else did so, I forget? The eye, which is just two arcs. Oh, the cloud. Hmm. And the you can see me under here. I'm, I'm looking underneath so I can see. <laughs> and the pentagon. We see your chin. So let's, uh, yeah. let's jump Yeah, in. so... Uh, oh, so all right. So the, the idea is that the first row, right? You got a dot, line, arc, angle, spiral, and a loop. And then if you kind of look at the second row, the circle is there's there's it's infinite, right? So and there's no dot, there's no corner. The eye has two endpoints: triangles three, squares four, pentagons five. And then the ellipsis continues on to six point, seven point, octagon, eight point, and so on and so forth. And then the cloud represents just you know, whatever, just your, your, your ultimate intimate or infinite shape. Yeah. And then below that, you can see that each one of these elements or these icons or these objects are communicated as simply as possible with as minimal lines as necessary in order to communicate a message. So picture frame, classic TV set, clock, a dead emoji, I guess, is that it? And then a party hat, a cat. Now, if you look at the cat down there in the, this one down here in the corner, it is only using four of the um, characters of the alphabet, the circle, the arc, the line, and the dot. But it's how you, you, you like the tail is one arc and then, a, then an inverted arc going the opposite way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does, but I'll say that I don't think just randomly, like if I hadn't seen you do that, if you said, use the visual alphabet and draw a cat, I don't think that's what I would have come up no, no. with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's skill. That's, that's skill. The alphabet, the alphabet helps you develop that skill. Okay. So, um, and that's why we're here, upskilling everybody. Well, what you do is you take that alphabet and then you you come up with a, a list of, of nouns to start with, not metaphors, because metaphors, they, they tend to get a little trickier, right? Right. Um, so start with things, right? Just come up with a list of things and say, okay, using only the characters in the alphabet, communicate a, a, a pair of spectacles, right? So yep. let's see. Let's look at another one. Um, people so there's different types of people so when you're trying to communicate mm -hmm. like action interest and it just this becomes style right do you like the box mm -hmm. people do you like the weebles people do you like the pencil people the star people so you you come up to one that you are comfortable with quickly i can draw a star pretty quickly or i can draw a, a you know a a square box people faster and you just come up with that concept and then that then you own it that's your that's your it's just like you're like signing your name when i draw a person 
this is the style of the person I'm always going to draw or sketch or doodle to communicate. There's two people talking or there's a person running or there's a person standing here gesturing. Right. So as you go along, yeah. you just, you develop your own style, just like your writing style. We're all, you know, most everybody I've imagined in this audience, we all have our own writing style when it comes to writing scripts, when it comes to writing instruction, we have our own style and that style has evolved and perfected over time. The more you do it, the more you refine your own style. It's the exact same thing. The, the, the theory behind the visual language theory, um, and there's an actual paper called I Can't Draw. <laughs> and it's a research article. Um, the reason I can't draw, I say, you ever heard that before? How many in this audience says, well, that's great. Yeah, but I can't draw. Oh, that'd be wonderful. That's really cool. But I can't draw. Well, the reason you can't draw is because you stopped practicing. <laughs> so think of everything in your life that you're really good at. Are you a really great cook? Uh, are you really great embroiderer? Are you a really great potterer? Any of these other crafts or things that you create, you've perfected it and mastered it over your life. And then you've created a style. So I'm, I'm thinking of pottery. I'll go to the, the local farmer's market. There's several potters that have their wares out every, every week. And you can distinctly tell, I know that artist because of that. So I can look at that potter yeah. and say, I know exactly who did that. It's the same thing with art. It's the same thing with drawing. So the, 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 the theory or the article I can't draw is that usually right around the age six, seven, eight years old, we're all drawing when we're kids. We're all doodling crayons. We're do everybody's doing it. Most, most kids are drawing. Well, then as they get older into their preteens, they have other interests, sports, music, choir, band, whatever it is. And then they stop practicing their doodling and their drawing. Those that continue to push through that and say, well, this is my, I like this better than chess club. I like this better than playing baseball. I like this better than playing the tuba. I want to draw more. And that was me. Instead of joining all those clubs, I came home and I kept drawing every day, every day, every day after school. In fact, true story, and I think I've told this before, uh, and I can't remember how old I was. It was in elementary school. I got in trouble because I had finished my in-class homework. And uh, I started doodling on the edges and the margins and I flipped it over and I started drawing. I made a complete mess out of the paper because I was drawing little characters all over it. And uh, of course I got in trouble because I was drawing on my homework. Now I finished my homework, but that's irrelevant. The fact that I was drawing on my homework, regardless if it was finished or not. And back then in the day, I don't know, I'm baiting myself, but back then teachers actually picked up the phone and called your parents said, Hey, you know, you need to talk to Kevin. He's been like disruptive today. And then you get home and then your mom's like, how was school today? Oh, it was great. Anything you want to tell me? <laughs> no. Are you sure? Well, when your dad gets home, I was like, what did I do? Right. I'm trying to think what kind of trouble did I get in? Well, it turns out uh, my teacher made me write uh, 100 times. I will not draw on my homework. That's, that's punishment. Well, then when my dad so found out, I know when my dad found out, he gets home and he says, well, you're going to stop that. So you need to do it 500 more times for me. So I had a total of 600 times I had to write, I will not draw on my homework. So here's an opportunity to practice block letters and balloon letters. <laughs> so I went to my room and I drew 600 times, I will not draw on my homework and block letters and perspective letters and balloon letters. And I just practiced lettering. And I took that as an opportunity to practice, right? That's a true story. You know, if my <laughs> parents were around, they would, they would verify that for me. What, what was the reaction to that approach, Kevin? <laughs> Just, you know, shaking their head. You delinquent, okay, you know. <laughs> it, it didn't, they, didn't add, they didn't add 500 more. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm just checking. Well, it got, I mean, that was just, that was elementary. You should have seen what I almost, I almost <laughs> didn't graduate high school because I was drawing. Now that's for another day. So here's places. So think of places and then use, and then you see the sort of the legend at the bottom of each one of those. Yeah. So this is how you practice, right? So think of places. So, you know, start with nouns, people, places, things, come up with a list and then just write out randomly, write out five thing, five people, five places, five things. So you have 15 things 
and then draw pull up the alphabet and then try to recreate those from that list that you created that's practice and as you become to do that then you <clears throat> you begin to start seeing things and uh, metaphors and analogies and you can um begin to create different things. hang on let me get to this other i got a little um this might be fun to do <clears throat> we're going to tell us we're going to tell a story so we're going to need everybody to participate in chat oh yeah uh, we have I, audience participation coming up here we go ready now i'm going to show you an image and then you're going we're going to we're going to build a story based on these images okay so here's the first image What's going on there in that frame? Online shopping. Online shopping. Okay. <laughs> I went somewhere one. different than the office. I, yeah. Okay. I was just going to say Kevin working, but I like online shopping okay. better. Now where's the story go? Online shopping. Ooh. Um, customer service to find out where my package is gone. Okay. Here we go. Getting there. <laughs> no, I like. Yeah. Jennifer's saying that the first panel is her watching Idiotic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quiet quitting day, right, Patty? <laughs> All right. Phone ringing. We got so so. What's happening here? Person answering. Person answering. Okay. <laughs> Support now, answering. These first these first four frames. Okay. Now now we're getting it to sequential narrative. Visual sequential narrative. <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> That's great. I love it. So we when have we think the best of chat room ever. So when we think of sequential narrative, what we're happening in this first set of panels is we're establishing an environment. We're establishing a scene. And we don't need any words here. We don't need any narrate. We can just have music in the background. But we've automatically set you in that environment. So, okay, there's a there's a desk, a phone's ringing, somebody's answering the phone, and it's 20 minutes after 12 according to this clock. So now I know what time of day it is. I know where the environment is, and now we can set the mood. We can set the emotion that goes along with that. But then we can we can throw a wrench in the whole story. Now what's happening? Mm. Time is money. Clearly. Time is money. There's an there's an analogy metaphor. It's like so. Maybe there was some kind of deal made on the phone. Meet me at twelve twenty. Now we've got some secret conspiracy, perhaps going on. <laughs> or it could just be a Craigslist purchase. There you go. Could be. Wait a minute. <laughs> It was a bookie on the phone. <laughs> Good one, Patty. Right. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, uh, hospital. Could be. Um, pizza order. <laughs> it's as a pizza order. And now here's the here's the big wrench. Where this changes everything. I can sense this it. changes everything. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Clearly, we're now waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> oh, way. <hey. laughs> oh, dang it. Come on, Mr. Button Machine. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we get. <laughs> Ooh, leaving the scene. Leaving the scene. <laughs> and. <laughs> Sharon threw in Cinderella <laughs> about the shoe. As a, a male version of Cinderella. I mean, you know, not to, it looks like yeah. a man's shoe. Sorry. That's I just, why I went there is we should probably keep it like. It could be just okay. general Oxfords. There you go. So, so like these Oxford, last three here, the, you know, the car leaving the city, arriving at the airport, flying away. So if you, like, and then. Shoe addiction. <laughs> and then we we get to a deserted island somewhere. Right. And then lastly, the cliffhanger. It was a travel all agent all along. 
That's then now we have to have a cliffhanger. And that ends the story. Now, <clears throat> this exercise, if you will, um, and by the way, everything in here is pick out all the alphabet. The um, What is that thing? Oops. There we go. <clears throat> Everything in here uses the visual alphabet. Yep. Every icon, every scene, everything. Lines, dots, arcs, triangles, squares. So, again, the exercise is sometimes we're looking for a story and then we can't. We're trying to force the story. <clears throat> so start with random objects and then move them around. So one of the – I can't – I don't know if I can do this – so if if you don't like the way things are, then you move and you re. It's like cards, right? You move them around, and then the story changes. So I can slide things around and move them in, and practice like, oh, that story doesn't make sense. Oh, there's a something, you know, something in the way there. Yeah, you, you kind of get the idea what I mean there. But um, if if you're if you're struggling with coming up with a script or coming up with a story, start with the visuals first, yeah, and let the visuals create the story for you. And that will inspire. That I will promise you, inspiration will come from doing an exercise like this. Because like, oh wait, what if what if the person did this? What if they did that? Oh, this is where we need some kind of activity. So let's yeah. you know we have to have we have to lead into that, and then we have to have and maybe there's a <clears throat> um, there's a little thing that I've been working on called bump and jump. So you're taking the instruction and then you bump into a wall, right? There's like this dead end. And then you present the learner with a challenge and they have to jump over the challenge mm. or jump through it or, or accomplish it, you know, get a reward. So it's, you know, bump and jump kind of a thing, but you put these little bump and jumps all the way through your course, which, you know, they think they're rolling along real quick and then boom, slam, you hit a wall. Like, wait, how do I get past the wall? Well, you've got to solve this problem, you know, achieve this it would, thing. It, it all of a sudden dawns on me that this would be an excellent way, what you just showed in um, a lot of like process training and whatnot. Like when we're, when you're out talking to a subject matter expert, some people are doing a particular process wrong or skipping steps, or maybe there was a break and you're trying to figure out, or you're trying to just figure out what correct looks like. Right. You could list it all out, step one, step two, and write it and use words, or you could sketch out and maybe add words to each one of those panels to be a little bit more clear, maybe to start yeah, a little bit. There's, sketch there's it a out a little bit, show it to the subject matter expert, right? <laughs> Let them review that and go, Yeah, there's well, there's kind of a step in the middle. Oh, okay. Because now you're now you're collaborating back and forth and you're both on the same page and there's not gonna be any misunderstandings because there was a micro step or something assumed in between step four and step five. There was this other one. If you could put it in visuals, I think you're less likely to run into that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's, it kind of, there's, there's research and everything about the, the endorphins that fire in our brain when we start uh, working in analog um, because there's too many distractions and noise digitally. Right. Even if we're, even if we're writing, um, we we have <clears throat> we have the shortcut keys. We go flip. Oh look, let's check out social media real quick. Or you've got all the dings and bings and stuff that go on while you're in front of a computer or, or you know a tablet. So my new st little desk over there, I'm, I have to physically get up out of this chair, go over there, and there's nothing digital over there. It's all analog. So I'm it's just me and my brain and a piece of paper, and I can think. Right. And I can sketch out and I can start moving things around and things will start emerge out of the paper. I promise you things will emerge and come up yeah. out of there. Um, and then once you formulate that, now you can start adding words. OK, now I've got an outline. Now I can start start doing this. Let me let me show you another example. We'll get to some questions. Um, yeah. Drop um, some questions in, folks, if you have any or if you have a particular project you're working on. Uh, we're working whatnot. on this um, project, this industrial. So to give you kind of give you set the setting. Uh, there's some kids that were part of this STEM um, club and uh, they built a robot and the robot, um, they were, they're wanting to learn history, but they couldn't travel to these different places they wanted to learn about. 
So they decided they were going to build a robot and then send the robot to go learn for them and then come back and bring back all the information. So it's kind of a history for STEM kids kind of thing. And we wanted this sort of gamification industrial look to it. So we needed an interface. So we sketched out or I sketched out an interface. So this now becomes the actual e-learning interface. And then the corners, the buttons change, and then you got a control panel with some navigate. And then the panels on each side kind of slide in and out, and the lights go on based on your progress, depending on what you're doing. And then content just sits right there in the middle. So just the look and feel of the interface kind of puts you into that, I'm in the basement building a robot kind of STEM idea. Um, and surprisingly, this first sketch was approved. Usually it takes 10 or 12 of those to get through, but that first one actually made it through. They, they loved it right off the bat. And I, I, will, I will echo your uh, comment about um, needing to step away from the digital side of things and um, working that, the whole cognitive science behind touching something physical, whether it's the pen to the paper and thinking it through and drawing it or the Lego stuff that you do yeah, it's uh, the to help people be creative. Yeah. Being able to touch them, even if it's metaphorically, even if it's not real, there's something about that that does actually work and really helps you start to think differently. And sometimes it can be frustrating but it's a it's frustrating in a good way because you run up against those walls like you're talking about and it forces you to think through them and to come up yeah. with another solution or another way and to get over them and to practice doing that is incredibly important well even even if you're still uncomfortable or intimidated by the idea of analog design um i would encourage you to just start with um you know like coloring books it's just, it's the act of, like Brent was just saying, it's the act of working with your hands, whether it's playing Lego, whether it's coloring, it, 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 it releases, uh, um, it unlocks some certain things like a deeper sense of thinking. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, like, you know, there's all these ideas always happen when we're not at our desk. You know what I'm talking about, right? Or mm -hmm. you're out now doing garden work out in the yard or you're in the shower. It's like, oh, what a brilliant idea. And then you can't remember the idea because you didn't write it down. You know, we get hundreds of those a day, right? But if you if you practice that as a discipline, that I need I need an idea. So how do I get an idea when I when I want it on demand? Then you practice these steps or these examples, and um, um, it, it, then it comes right. So and you yeah. can see by my background, I'm surrounded by inspiration. I'm surrounded by all kinds of things that, and you can't see the rest of my studio, but I've got. It's junk all over the place. It, creative chaos is what I call it. And it's not, this isn't something that's out of your reach, folks. I mean, I know a lot of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, I have a graphics guy that I go to and I pay them. Whenever I have a client that uh, has this type of project for me, I go to my graphics guy. Uh, or maybe you go to Kevin, maybe. Uh... <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Let's, let's, let's hold on to that for a no. minute because you, you, sure. you make a key point. Um, a graphics designer is not a sequential storyteller. It's a difference. Mm. So if you're if you're looking for somebody to do visual sequential narratives where the visuals tell the story, then look in the comics industry because they know they have that understanding. They know how to visually tell a story. They're given a script by somebody who wrote the script, and then they have to create the visuals to support that script in a visual narrative and pacing and environment and camera angles, all of those things that comic artists do to make that happen. But a graphic designer, graphic artist is is not the it's two different, completely two different disciplines. Sure. I was thinking more of the interface thing that you drew, though, and just yeah, yeah. in general. And when yeah. when you feel like you can't do that kind of stuff, hey, we're we're. Uh, Boy, we're we're hitting past our usual forty-five minutes, but uh, that's all right. Uh, Let me do one more. Okay, one more. What is this? What is this? What is this scene? Tell me. Tell me what's going on here. That's somebody else in the chat watching us on their iPhone. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we can't. What time of day is it? Morning. How do you? Because know there's that? coffee and the sun in the window. Okay. And, you know, the clock's kind of a dead giveaway, right? <laughs> well, the clock could be, you know, AM or PM. It's the other visuals that contextualize maybe. For Same it. scene, but now what's going on? 
<laughs> Time has passed. <laughs> Chelsea's saying, me about to lecture people on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between the two is one, it's just a a person sitting at, like you said, right? It's morning, there's coffee, that kind of, it, there's that cue that even if the clock wasn't on the wall, the the coffee and the sun shining establishes the time of day. So just those visuals can, can, can place us in a setting and it clearly we're at the breakfast table. The second scene says, if you look, now you get into more details, you look in the background, you see a picture portrait of a family so now we have a family. This It's not a single person. This is a, a, a husband, right? So he's got a family. And oh, by the way, they got a pet. Happens to be a cat. So now we, we're looking in the, you know, in, in more of a, okay, now we're looking in the environment of a family early in the morning. So e, these, these little details can communicate establishing a setting, establishing mood. We can even we're we're already establishing a little bit of character background, a little character development background of who this person is. So we can do this for a number of scenes without a single word or a single uh, narration. And then once because the importance here, getting back to the science we were talking about, the importance here is we're drawing the learner, the student, the viewer, we're drawing them into the story. And once we once we have them where they feel representative and they and it's relatable to them, now they're invested in that story and they're, and they're motivated to keep going. What's around the corner? And then it just gets into you know storytelling techniques about cliffhangers and dropping clues and and then you help help folks motivate through. So if you think of it from a digital storytelling visual narrative approach. Yeah then you can motivate your learners through your course. Whether they Very cool. care or not, you know, you cared about putting it together. That's all that matters. Neat yeah, help. fantastic stuff, as always. Brent, earlier in the, in a few minutes ago, Brent mentioned the, or used the phrase step away. And Kevin is part of a conference, non-conference kind of a thingy that uh, is happening. And I threw creative a Creative design earlier. retreat. Yeah, creative design retreat. I, I threw a link into yeah. the chat. Folks are interested in, in that chance to maybe practice not just this stuff, but you know other aspects of putting your creativity to, to better work for you. Finding that inner creative, creative problem team. solving. We never did there get the questions. Go. Were there questions? There weren't any questions. Uh, folks are, you know, it's early in the morning for some folks, late in the afternoon for others, and it's it, you know some of <laughs> them getting have had into lunch. the groove. But yeah. yeah, some of them have had lunch and they're settling into that late anyway. Folks, as, um, just a reminder, as always, uh, our time here that Brent and I spend on Idiotic is uh, sponsored by Domino, learning systems makers of Domino One. And if that's uh, something of interest, go ahead and check out uh, the Domino website. Learn more about what uh, Domino One could maybe do for you, for your team. Yep. In, and if you want to go into our Crowdcast in channel, you can save your spot for the next five yes. upcoming episodes. we got a, a rocking all season and there's lots of good stuff so before you depart today make sure you link on to the uh, you know sign up for the next few episodes some really great stuff next thanks week everybody is on, next week See is on nudging adios everybody thanks so much gang Bye-bye. Adios.